All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Judoka Talk, where Judoka Talk. Today, we have um, a really good talk, I think, today, where we're going to be talking about the Budapest Grand Slam uh, that just happened last weekend. And today, we've got four athletes that competed there. We have Ella <laughs> Ford, um, Nefeli Papadakis, Artur Maj de Leon, and Shadi Alnahas. Uh, for those who uh, don't know Arthur, uh, you should. He's ranked third in the world. Uh, he's medaled multiple times at Grand Slams and at the Masters. And so I think he's a great addition to the talk. And additionally, for the results, Arthur got third place in Budapest. Shadi also got third place. Nefeli didn't do so well. And LA had probably the worst experience out of everyone. Uh, he tested positive on arrival and he's still in Budapest in quarantine. No way, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting to see his face when you heard, like. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, what? But um, yeah, so I wanted to, before we go into the actual experience of the tournament, I just wanted to talk, ask you guys a little bit of how you felt your preparations were going into this because Budapest was only really confirmed a week or two before it actually happened. So I guess the Canadians can start, you know, how was, did your prep, how was your preparation going into this? How did you feel it was? I'm going to let talk Shady for the first part and I'm going to give my experience after. Yeah, his experience is kind of completely different than mine, I'd say, you know, <laughs> for like, I don't know, for me, I, I was always like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That was my mentality. I was like, I'm going to train just to be in shape because, you know, you never know. But at the same time, I didn't think anything was going to happen. But surprisingly, I was like, I felt pretty good. I've been like focusing on getting stronger. So that was my, my main focus. And yeah, honestly, for me, it was like the same. It felt like a regular tournament. It's just the break was healthy for me because I kind of recovered even though I got injured in the camp again, I recovered, but then, you know, it's like, it was like a fresh mind mindset because we're always on the go, go, go. And I was burnt out. So this was a good way to like flush all the negativity out and start again. Yeah. And you were fighting really, you were really on form that day, I think. Thank you, kind sir. I appreciate it. I, f I felt the strongest I've ever felt in my life. So I was like, damn. Yeah. And um, Arthur, how was your preparation? Yeah, I think as Shetty said, like, it was pretty short notice. And uh, for me, most of the hard part was making weight in two weeks notice because I'm walking around at like 80, 81. And uh, in two weeks and a half before the tournament, they just say, uh, boom, tournament. So like physically wise and like judo wise, I was ready because we were like training for eventually coming back to training to a tournament. I was good, but the weight cut was probably one of the worst I ever did in my life. <laughs> so as soon as they gave the tournament, I stopped eating and was on water. <laughs> For those watching, uh, Arthur fights at 73 kilos. So that's uh, quite a big cut in two weeks. Yeah, um, but the, yeah, it was it was hard, but like eventually at the tournament, like felt pretty good. So in that case, we can say that probably the break of a uh, eighth month was probably good in a sense, but like, I'm pretty sure everyone wished to have done Olympics in uh, the past yeah. summer, if, if it was possible. And Nefeli, how, how was your preparation? What did you think of it? Um, my preparation was like, I don't know, it's been hard at home just cause my dojo has not been open. So I've kind of been running judo and it's just been a group of like four or five of us. So it definitely has been different in that sense. And I think when I got there, I don't know, it was, it was a little weird because it's been so long. So I think the first one back definitely like got me, like did me a little dirty. I wasn't, I didn't feel as focused for whatever reason, but I think for me, it was good to get that one in before Pan Ams because points at Pan Ams are a lot. So I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I got to compete and kind of get, get the first one done. So now I'm just looking towards Pan Ams, you know? Yeah. And LA, how, how was your preparation down in Texas? Uh, the preparation was good. I, uh, I mean, as good as can be expected. Uh, there's a few people in the area, um, like Geronimo and a couple other people. 
uh, that I've been training with. We've been training together for a while. You know, we kind of trust each other not to do anything stupid uh, as far as being exposed and stuff like that. So I have at least a few people to train. I, I've been doing different things for training um, just to kind of shock my body and, and still like feel like it's getting tested. And then, um, yeah, you know, I, I felt I've definitely gotten stronger over the break. Uh, you know, I was feeling pretty good. Got my two tests before, both negative. I was, I was ready to go. Yeah, so and, I like, uh, how about we just go into immediately like, so what happened when you arrived? So you were, um, so you arrived separately from the rest of the team, obviously. Yeah, so. I was uh, one day, I think I was the last one to arrive. Uh, yeah. I arrived on the 22nd. I flew out on the 21st uh, from Dallas, Dallas to Houston, um, and then Houston to Frankfurt. Uh, my flight from Houston to Frankfurt got delayed, so I was supposed to get in a little bit earlier, I think around like 2 or 3 p.m. in Budapest. Um, but I missed my connection. So I ended up landing in, um, Budapest at, um, like 10 PM, 10 or 11. Um, so yeah, go to the, uh, I go to the hotel or they take us to one hotel. Um, it was actually me and Lee and, uh, we go to one hotel, um, to take our test and, uh, or to take our COVID test and, it's this this old guy who looked fed up with doing tests and uh <laughs> he had, he has masks and gloves and there was there's like one there's a couple other people there getting tested one guy was like uh i don't even know like wasn't an athlete he was like coach or something maybe but uh he tests he walks out i go in it's in it's in the business center of the hotel and um yeah the guy like he didn't change his gloves he was like did the nose swab and the mouth swab and and uh, rubbed it in the vial, did all the whole thing and then put it right in the trash, like right at his feet, all open. But, you know, I was like, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's no big deal. And uh, yeah, went to my room. Thank God I had a single because if I was rooming with anybody, they kind of would have probably been screwed. And uh, they called me the next morning, said I was positive and I had to move. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... How long, how long have you been in quarantine? Now? Since, since the 22nd. So on, uh, so they moved me down to the first floor. Uh, I think I forget the name of the hotel, Danubius, something like that. Yeah. Uh, they moved me down to the first floor uh, and I was staying there. I, I like had no idea what was going on as far as like um, what they were doing with the protocol and stuff. Cause they had listed some stuff obviously before the tournament but pretty much when everything happened it was like okay yeah we're just handing this all off to the Hungarian government um so they're gonna <laughs> like they're handling the situation I guess uh so I didn't hear anything until uh Sunday night and then that's when they said okay like uh you're gonna stay the whole time I'm trying to get retested which uh I mean, not just for the sake of like, obviously, once I knew I tested positive, I knew that competing was done. Um, but just like trying to get home, you know, if I have two negative tests, I would be able to to, to go home um, at least earlier. But um, they said just uh, quarantine for 10 days. And then after 10 days, you can go home. No, no retest. They won't test you or anything like that. So which didn't really make much sense to me, but. I guess that's what the Hungarian government wanted. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty messed up. And like, did you have to like, do you have to pay for those hotels? Um, uh, yes, they do. Uh, USA Judo said they would cover. Um, I, I was in the one hotel and then um, they moved all of us. So a few Italians and I think some other players. <clears throat> uh, they moved us to another hotel on Tuesday evening in a in a like a hospital van one by one oh. that's crazy <laughs> yeah dude showed up in a hazmat suit it yeah. was pretty fun that was like our biggest worry like me and arthur were moving together and we're like please god don't make any of us test positive at least in budapest you know you don't be stuck there but, but yeah, yeah 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 it sucked it 
I, I knew, I, you know, obviously we all knew like the risks and knew there was a chance, you know, you just hope for the best and you, and, you, you know, always wish it's not you. Exactly. Exactly. Unfortunately it, it was me this time. So. Uh, but you feel good. Like, you know, you probably, it was probably like nothing wrong. You know, feel good. No content. Like, yes. Yeah, even the whole time, you know, I never had any symptoms. Um, felt fine. Like I was still doing as much as I can as far as workouts in, in my room and stuff. Um, so, you know, like I said, as far as symptoms and stuff, I feel, I felt fine. I still feel fine. So when I go home, obviously I'll, I'll get tested and, and quarantine a bit. So, Wait, they're not, not testing you like before you leave? No, they're just they're just saying get it get out of here, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, genius. So that was, it's honestly, genius. that was my thing. I didn't understand. It's like okay, I tested positive, and then I'm gonna go home, or you're sending me, you know, on an airplane, yeah, in airports, yeah. without testing me again. So yeah, that's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so how was, for the rest of you all, like how was um, all like showing up? And so you had to, um, so you had to show up, get tested, and then quarantine in your rooms. Um, how like how was that um, like as an experience? Um, because usually you can like go walk around the city or go walk around and, like find a store for food. Like um, did it mess with like your, you know, your game face or whatever? Like um, getting ready for the competition. Uh, um i don't know for me not not really i came in at like maybe like 4 or 5 p.m and i was so tired so i did my test and i got to my room passed out and the next morning it was like okay you're negative and it was fine so i guess yeah not getting to walk around was a little weird but at the same time like i didn't think we were going to be able to go to the competition at all because that's what they told us initially i think but then we ended up being able to go. I warmed up with Adonis the first day. So it wasn't, it wasn't that different. The really, the main difference was just that we couldn't go to like a convenience store or whatever, but I just brought snacks with me. I brought Gatorade stuff with me. So I was fine, I think. Oh, so they, um, they let you go to the tournament, even though it wasn't your day to compete. Yeah. Which so is against the, think, which is against the orig original COVID restrictions. I'm pretty sure. Right. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean, at that point, if you if you tested negative and you did your quarantine and everyone had like, I didn't understand really why that would have been a problem. And I think uh, they realized that or they just decided to change it for whatever reason. And yeah, they were we had like a spectator section. We just had to sit like one chair apart from each other. So they just kind of changed the guidelines. But it, I think it made sense. I didn't think it was really an issue. And so for our turn shot at you. So you guys were rooming together. Did you, enjoy, did you enjoy the quality time that you spent together? <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Like usually when Shetty and I room together, we always do well. So show it up again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in my uh, my part, I think the COVID restriction were not that like handicapped that much of an handicap like aside from like not being able to go run and uh, as i said i have a lot of weight to do and like they didn't give us the results of our test until the next day uh, so there was one full day where i couldn't do any training after the plane so it was like i was scared of being a little too heavy but went down pretty good so aside from that i think the the restriction were okay it's and like 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 uh, Nefali just said, it's like they they we saw that they reduced it a little to uh, like common sense, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, it was like because we got tested as soon as we got there, went to a hotel to get tested. Then we went back to the room to quarantine, and we found out that a result because we went there at eleven to get the test, eleven a.m., and then they got the result at six but somehow are like they forgot to tell us or they lost like the results or something. So we had to wait 24 hours until the next day to like find out we're like negative. And then it was just a half. It was like, of course it sucked to stay in the room and everything, but at the same time, it's like, 
I'm not going to go walk around the hallways, you know? So it was like kind of the same thing at the end of the day, but overall it was pretty good. I'd I'd say, but at the same time, a lot of people tested positive. Right. So that kind of like is kind of unfair to them, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I I always thought in my opinion that like we should have waited a little bit longer to like figure this out. Cause I think it's so like uncertain what's happening, what's happening with the virus. And it's unfair for like example LA like fucking sorry Frigian went all the way I apologize Frigian all the way went to like Budapest and then doesn't even get to compete you know so I think that's uh, kind of unfair but it is what it is I guess you're just gonna have to meet me in the finals in uh, Pan Ams I think <laughs> yeah but um. So when you're actually in the sort of like going to the like tournament hall and on your day of competition, when you're warming up and everything, um, so you're meant to only war- uh, like from what I read of the restrictions, you're only meant to warm up with your team and like with only one person. Um, you're meant to like stay distanced from all the other teams. Uh, you're meant to wear masks everywhere. Um, was that the case for the restrictions or was things a lot more like a regular tournament? I think that like after everybody got tested and like where I was at the tournament site that like the athletes competing, I don't think after a fight, I'm going to put my mask on and just chill and warm up and, and, you know, so people competing didn't like, didn't keep the mask on at all times outside, like other than fighting. Like when I was resting, I took my mask off, but the coaches and the staff kept it at all times. That's something like our coach Sasha and uh, Tiffany, our physiotherapist kept the mask at all times. So. yeah and- I agree. it wasn't like it the regular tournament thing like I was warming up regular I was I mean I didn't have my mask on while I was warming up I don't think many people did but I would say yeah I agree that all the staff and people running the tournament and stuff they were pretty like adamant on keeping them on yeah so- like I warmed up with the Denmark Matson guy and you know <laughs> nobody said anything that was okay so the restrictions they set out were not exactly followed, but there's still common sense, I guess. But I think after yeah, after like two tests, everybody's negative, so they're more lenient or like open to like you know, be more flexible yeah. with the rules. Yeah, and then so I guess um since things were pretty regular, that didn't really mess with your psyche at all, like going into the competitions. Not that much. Maybe it didn't. Like the the, the only annoying thing was like when like you just warmed up and like you go from the actual uh, warming up area, as you go to go to the mat, you have to keep your mask on. And as you're like tired and like having uh, to breathe in a mask, it was really, really hard. And that changed that in a little, but like aside from that, like it was uh, pretty much the same. Like Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, one thing I did want to ask about was like with weigh-ins. Uh, so they moved the weigh-ins to the warm-up room. Did weigh-ins take like way longer than usual, or it is completely normal? Because they were gonna, they said they were going to clean the scale every single time. Weigh-ins for me were faster than normal. Yeah. Because everyone was like there, and like they called all of us in, and they had us all standing like six feet apart in a big line, like. And I feel like, cause I was the last day, it was faster. Cause they had like a system. They just had a lady like literally sitting next to the scale with the spray and the wipe thing. And it was like, step on, wipe, step on, wipe. And it was really like quick. I was out in literally five minutes. Oh, yeah. so that's, oh that's really nice then. Cause usually weigh-ins take like over 30 minutes. And... A little bit of structure and a plan speeds things up. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's wild, isn't it? If, if people like in <laughs> orderly fashion. <laughs> Yeah, so but like so now I like, onto the actual competition. LA, did you like keep up today and like watch everything? Yeah, yeah, I definitely watched every day. Uh, yes, but what did you guys think some, of some like, of the streaming was messed up? Yeah. What do you guys uh, think of like uh, the competition like with everyone returning? Do you notice like any countries were struggling more than usual or you know, did you it, it felt like it was pretty much back to normal, which um and I, like, how did you guys feel fighting since it was the first time back fighting again in so long? Uh, 
for my part, I think it was uh, pretty, pretty good and pretty like it's like that, that you feel that like even though you take eight months break, like you don't really lose the judo you had before. Like you and we came back and got in shape and we're not ready to like focus on a tournament, but we were getting ready for like anything that could happen. So I didn't realize I, I didn't really see any country struggling. If anything, like first day, like in 60, 66, I see Russia, Russia in final. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's, <laughs> they're going to kill us all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the Russians had a really good first day. Yeah, I, after that, I was like, okay, they took advantage of that break to like, I, we all thought they never stop. And yeah. Confirmed it at the first day, but then after you saw that it was, uh, I think everybody was ready. It's just those two categories, they were strong. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you were, so Arthur, you were seated second and you had a, a, a really good day, um, but you know, you struggled in the semi final against uh, Stump, who was yeah. un an unseated player. You know, that's, yeah. I guess that just happens. Uh, well, he had a he had an amazing day that day, but like I, I dumb in my like in my opinion, I dominated that fight, and like I think the one that were the most rusty were the referee because there were some really really weird call in that tournament, and uh, but anyway, it happened. Everybody get rusty. So, Nefeli, do, <laughs> do you want to talk about uh, the refereeing? <laughs> um, I think. Hmm, how am I going to, I mean, I, I definitely could have fought better and I should never leave it up to the referees, but I do think it wasn't a great call that I got that, that score at the end. Um, but you know, shit, stuff happens. That is what it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's something I noticed actually a lot is, um, Wazari's were a, like, they were giving Wazari's like for much weaker than I've seen before. Um, because usually when you land and your arm is like this, yeah like, usually like my arm like I was on both knees like I I get it if I like gave a hip you know when my hip was like turned in mm -hmm. but I was like two knees flared out and like my this touched but I never like really rolled and yeah. I I don't know I couldn't really believe I didn't even think they were going to give it to her because I really was confident that it was not a score and then when they did I was like oh wow yeah I think I don't think they would have even given that a coca um, like, <laughs> ever, like many years ago, um, yeah. now to Wazari. It happened to, I mean, it happened to a it, few people. It happened That's a lot. It happened to like a watch day, uh, day two, like Arthur's day. I think that was in the final block two. I was like, my mind was blown. I was sitting and four out of the five, five like in the final block, it would be yeah. like, one. and then like the guy would all like, like be done. And then like, okay, never mind, Wazari. I'm like, Okay, if you do that like once or twice, okay. But if you do it like that was like four that's or five match. fights in the final block, and I was like, that's insane. Like with with Tommy, for example, or even like Arthur Semi, like it's like yeah. sometimes I don't get it. That's why I'm like, I don't know. But at the same time, being a ref is a hard job, I know, and all yeah. that. But some things need like that's not uh, an excuse. I, I, like if it happens five times in a final block, come on now, you know. Yeah, it's it can I guess it can mess with like because um, if you're on the last day and you're watching the refereeing, you kind of like basing how you're gonna have to fight a little bit on what the refereeing is like on the day. And if it's a lot different than you've seen in usual times, then that can mess up with you a little bit. But uh, Shadi, so like, how did you? I want I want to talk a little bit about your day because you you were on fire to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you, you, um, the match you lost against um, Adamian. Um, how many times? I mean, how many times have you fought Adamian in before? I'm four. I'm only four against him. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, Adamian is like absurdly strong. And when I when yeah. I saw him, when I saw him walk out um, against Skincarvez, um, I pretty much laughed because. He just walks out and he's the thickest human man, like human being you've ever seen. But LA would know that like Horomov and Gonkalvez are not weak 
athlete. Yeah, exactly. No. And he meant them. Yeah, he ran like, them. Yeah. Like, like, he, like, ran them over like a truck. Like, and he would do that to me last three fights. So I was like, this time, like, yeah. whew, need to, like, perform. Like, and, that was probably my most challenging, like, mental-wise. Because, like, you know, somebody beats you that many times, you're like, yeah. But, but I think even though I lost this one, I think that was like my like, I think for the first time I seen in his eyes, really like, damn, that boy is it's not you know, good. yeah, it's good. You know, so I think that was like, a tough fight. He's gonna get better. Yeah, in my opinion, i I think the first two minutes you kind of were like still in the idea that you could lose, but I think about halfway through into the match, you, I felt like you realized you could actually beat him. Yeah, yeah and when that you was... started turning in much better, and your attacks became a lot more. Because in the previous matches, when you turn your hips and you really commit and you change direction and you change direction and stuff, but against Damian, because of his Uranagis, you were a lot more reserved. But then, yeah, yeah, you really started throwing your hips in um, again. And like, I felt like it was the first time I saw when you saw it when I was like, oh, Shani can actually beat him. Yeah, yeah. I think next time I'll, I'll, I'll beat him, hopefully. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like he's. Ali would like Ali would know he's a freaking monster. I, I've you know? fought, I've, <laughs> I've also fought him in Junior Worlds. Uh, yeah, Nefeli, if you remember that, he beat me in twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, he uh, came out. Uh, he he dragged me to the ground and then he turned me over. And uh, I was in that hold down. I just I literally couldn't move. It was I, it was absurd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he looked like a strong. Yeah, I know. To and. He's so strong, and then uh, to see the final where Ilyasov holds him down with, with. Uh, um, what is that? What do we call that turnover? I forget to call. It's almost like a Peterson. Yeah, but I, that was like, bit, uh, that was a little bit absurd because both of them were going for the exact same turnover. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that and, just gives you an idea of how strong Ilyasov is, too. Yeah. And both of them were just you know, kind of like rolling around in a circle before one could grab like, the upper leg. I thought it was pretty funny, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and Shadi, we've lost your camera for a second. But OK. Is he actually still there? I don't think he's on. Or it's muted. Oh, wow. And Nefeli, how did you, um, what, when you're watching the rest of the 78s, you know, what, did you have any, you know, ideas about how, how you feel you'll be able to like come back after your loss? Did you? I mean, I don't, I think when I fought, I was just hesitant. I don't think I fought like terribly, but I was hesitant to like actually go in and finish throws. Um, and I need to pick up the pace. So I, I like, I know what I did wrong, but I think that's a big part of like going into the next tournament. Like you have to know what you did, fix it, capitalize on that. And I think, I mean, I started doing judo, what, today. So I already started doing those things. And, you know, I definitely got the talk from my dad, who's my coach, when I got home and after I lost and on the, on the flight back. So I definitely heard um, what needs to be changed. Yeah. So. And do you think, um, uh, like having done, like getting kind of your nerves out in Budapest, do you think that's going to, uh, that's kind of giving you a little more confidence to go into Pan Ams now? For sure. For sure. I think, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's only going to benefit me. I don't, I don't really think I lost any confidence from one like dumb loss. Cause I know what I did was stupid. And I know that that's not a match that I can really afford to lose or like that I should lose. So I, you know, just got to come back from it and get it done in two weeks. Yeah, of course. And so LA, are you also planning to go to Pan Am's if, you know, they allow you? They make it. <laughs> yeah, if I could make it, I definitely, I mean, right now we kind of have no choice, you know, if, especially if this is the route that you want to take. They're, they're holding these tournaments. They're making them 100% points. So, you know, we kind of have to, to, to have to go almost. Yeah. So what, they're still having a Pan Am's like in the spring? Is the plan? That's I don't know. I don't know about that. And I, yeah, I don't know why they like they tried to uh, rush these in for yeah. all continents now. Yeah. yeah. And um, Arthur, you mentioned that. So the Canadians stayed for a training camp after 
was mm-hmm. there was there like an official train because usually there's a training camp after some of the grand slams was this an official training camp or uh yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was the training camp that should have taken place i think but not many registered i don't, I don't know why like maybe like well probably COVID reasons like you don't want to get into a training camp right away especially like that like you don't know if those people were like tested or anything yeah. so we just got in that uh, and we were supposed to go in Pepindale actually to train and uh, that got canceled with the situation growing in uh, in Europe and countries closing down so uh, they were not going to accept us so we were supposed to go back on Monday in Montreal but we find out that there was that training camp in Tata, usually after uh, Grand Slam, that's what happened. And we just went. It was mostly like Czech Republic, Hungarian people and uh, Serbian and yeah. us. Or Sweden, like the Sweden team was there. So, but it was not a huge training camp. Yeah, so you guys just went back. Yeah, we went back on Thursday. We went, we did three days of training and came back on Thursday. Okay. So you got some training in with like some of the international players, I guess yeah. it's helpful. And um, also just after the competition, do you guys have to uh, stay quarantined or you guys can walk around the hotel, but uh, what's the rules there? Yeah, I think we were able like, I was walking around in the hotel, but I'm pretty sure it's like mostly the restriction were like for the, the, how you call it, the, before you get the two negative tests you, and you can't go out the hotel at all time. Like the bubble. So, yeah. But after the tournament, I think they said we were allowed to go out, but like, because you're supposed to leave, so. Technically, you can do like it's like you're having a trip in uh, in France or like anything. Like you just like on the way back, since you're not in the bubble anymore of the tournament, you're allowed to go uh, walk around. And how like how safe do you feel like the bubble was um, overall? Um, did you feel like you were confident? You know, everything was uh, safe with the restrictions and. You know, or do you be willing to go to another competition? Um, yeah. Are you, are you confident that the rest of like other competitions will be able to happen now and that they're safe to go to? Yeah. Well, if the restrictions are the same all the time, like I didn't feel in danger of contracting anything. If anything, I felt more in danger when I was taking the plane and uh, stuff like that because you're in contact with so many people. Like, But in the bubble, it's like, you know, they did that for the NBA, NHL and all those things. Like, if everybody is negative inside, there's no risk of you being in contact with someone positive. Like there's like, and like you were not able to like touch uh, anything like you were being served. Uh, it was like, I was, I was good with everything that happened in the farm. Like I, w- I would do it again if they do another one uh, in January. Yeah, I think they're gonna have masters in January. Uh, at least they're yeah. hoping to. Mm-hmm. And so now you guys have come back. Are you, so Arthur, you said you were uh, quarantining now. Um, I'm having talks with my cats, like I said earlier. <laughs> I don't have many things to do. It's like in Canada, we have that rule that uh, even if you're negative, like you're not allowed to go get a test and test negative. You have to just quarantine for 14 days night. Even if you're negative, you have to quarantine, which is, in my opinion, a little, like, too strict because, like, they could, like, just make us get a test as we get in, negative. Maybe you stay quarantined for five days still. And then when you do a second test, if you're negative, now you're allowed back in the yeah. the city because there's, like, literally, if I'm, if I'm positive, it's a good thing. But if I'm negative, like, I'm just losing two weeks, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, of course. And Nefeli, do you have to quarantine? Or I'd- um, there. I mean, the U.S. I- is like it's it's recommended, but you, there's no one like making me quarantine. You know, because um, it's a hoax. Half the people here think it's not real. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm I 
I got back on Monday, like at 2 p.m. So I quarantined, stayed in my room for three days. I took a test, I was negative, and then I took another test. So I'm like making myself double negative. I tested on like days three and six. Yeah. So I, that's my plan. Uh, I don't want to like go to training and do judo with these kids and then, you know, get them sick or anything or my family sick. So I'm still being careful and cautious, but yeah, there's no like actual set thing for us. Okay. And how do you, how do you guys plan like uh, expect your preparations to go for Pan Ams? Because um, Pan Ams is November 22nd, I but uh, like pretty much two, two, three weeks away now. Right. Um, so Arthur, you, I remember you told me that you're not going to go to Pan Ams. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the reasoning for that? Yeah. Um, so as I told you, like, uh, like I'm pretty good on the standing right now towards the Olympics. Uh, as I said, it's two weeks quarantine. So if I get two weeks now, I come back, I have five days of training. I have some stuff that they gave me, like uh, the gym and the national center. Like they gave me a bikes, elastics, TRX and stuff like that. But it's not real. Like I need stuff to train and lose weight. So it's not really helpful. But like, so for those reasons, like five days to come back and train towards Pan Am, uh, trip to Mexico, which is not guaranteed. You're, they're going to follow the rules exactly like the IGF are going to do, did, did it actually. And uh, also that when I come back, I have another two weeks of quarantine. So it would be like a month of quarantine. So I rather like take that one off and, uh, wait until like January where there's actually masters which is giving more points and like focus on training from now on and like I think rushing two tournaments when I didn't do any in like eight months is a little like from my side too much plus that I have to lose a lot of weight so I rather just take that one off and like focus on training yeah and LA, um, I'd say you're probably in one of the worst positions. Uh, but how are, you, how are you feeling going into the next three weeks now? Because uh, you're you're hoping to return on Monday. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to return tomorrow. And uh, yeah, obviously I have to do self-imposed restrictions. Uh, I'll be getting you know tested and pretty much what I've been doing, just doing what I can. Um, when I'm for sure that I'm, you know, negative and nothing's going on, um, it will be a short, a short time as far as training and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm not in as great a position as Arthur is. So, <laughs> so I have no choice. And Nefeli, how are you uh, feeling since you are going to be you're able to come back into training now? Do you yeah, think, I mean, is there I any feel difference? Fine. Is there anything like changes you're going to make uh, going into Pan Ams? Or are you yeah, gonna... I think I think like one factor of me fighting um, not as well as I wanted to in Budapest was the short time frame because I I really only did like three weeks of actual judo or three and a half weeks before Budapest like before we were there. So, you know, this gives me extra time. And um, I don't know, I think for me, my ranking right now, I'm like the last, I have the last spot for being qualified. So I, I mean, I do need to go to Pan Ams. I have like two, two of my points that I definitely can fill. So I'm hoping to go to this one. And I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen with Croatia in December. And I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen next year. So I kind of want to go get it done now as opposed to waiting for the next Pan Ams. But yeah, that's my plan. Yeah, and I'm wondering if since, yeah, so you meant you mentioned you're trying to have Pan Ams again in March. Yeah, I so We're right LA, so it had something like they're, it's like they're super scoring Pan Ams. So whichever one you do better at is yes. the points you get and I'm like okay well if some people I mean so it's it's morally not great of me but if some people can't go to this one um yeah. I'm gonna go yeah I have to take it that I'm sorry it's just how it is absolutely you know? 
<laughs> that's, just a, that's just the cost of doing business here but yeah it yeah. is what it is like i didn't make the rules right i'm just yeah. trying to get <laughs> <a chat laughs> on them, so. but that's also exactly. that's good news for arthur so he'll be able to right. get the continental championship points in march hopefully yeah yeah that's true like if they actually held a second one uh i'll be able to do that but i have like like it's it's stuff we hear but i would have difficulty like actually seeing it happening because like that mean like they have to do that with every continent mm -hmm. that's what exactly. i would because there's two pan am champion with a uh, 700 points which is a lot of points like considering like what's going on and like the the, the reduced number of tournaments. So I, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so in my opinion, they could have just waited and like make those Pan Ams where they should have been the year before. So in April, like it always is. I don't know why they're rushing it like right now, but like if I don't get a chance to get Pan Am, like, like sadly it... Uh, something but everyone have his own problem like look at LA like we were facing it we were doing a tournament and he didn't even get the chance to compete not because he chose to because he was imposed to not mm -hmm. do the tournament so like everybody has a uh, have his own problem and like we just have to do what we got to do yeah and for me uh they just announced you know the other day that uh, England's going back into lockdown for four weeks and I'm yeah, expecting heard I'm expecting it to be at least six weeks, to be honest, uh -huh. um, because they're saying that like if the data doesn't uh, show that cases are going like the case the infection rates going down, they're just going to keep extending the lockdown, and they're like they're making international travel like a little more restricted. So, you know, it's a complete mess for me to be training, and and so yeah, there's no judo clubs open really. But so I'm going to be uh, bringing this to an end. So do you guys have any more like thoughts you want to say about um, like your experience at Budapest? You know, did you enjoy being able to compete again? And other than LA, <laughs> LA, you can talk more about your experience if you desire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm, I'm yeah. just ready to move past it. <laughs> how, how was it being in a, in a room for like 10 days? Um, you know, just a lot of, uh, a lot of self-evaluation, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of Netflix, some YouTube videos, uh, <laughs> oh, so some, uh, some decent TV channels. So, you know, they brought me food and stuff at, uh, mm -hmm. three times a day. So were you able to platinum eat them service? Hey, we left the snacks, man. That was my idea. Oh, those snacks were clutch. Yes. I was like, Johnny, we have to leave him something. Like, I feel so bad he's suffering. Because <laughs> I did bring some snacks, but especially because, like, I was in the thing from the first day. So right. I pretty much demolished those within, like, three days. So that was uh, very clutch indeed. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, I'm going to end the talk. Uh, Shadi had to leave early. I had to help his dog. So. <laughs> his, his dogs are important, so it's a valid. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, uh, th thank you everyone for coming on. And I hope to see you back on the show in the future. And sure. I hope you guys have a good rest of the week and good, li good luck uh, preparing for Pan Ams. And Arthur, good luck quarantining for uh, another seven days. <laughs> uh, for another, uh, like, for, yeah for two yeah. minutes uh, I, hope your, I hope your fitness doesn't get too bad oh, i hope so too i have a nice <laughs> <practice>. yeah. <laughs> all right okay, thanks all right guys